On the last episode of What We Know, we talked about, well, you're gonna have to find out for yourself. Because right now we're gonna be pushing into the next one, so here we go. Another thing that I wanted to add is that um, Void Interactive added another picture to their Instagram. It's called Friends in Far, Far Places. I wonder if this has to do with the single player? I have no idea, but this looks interesting. So today we're going to be talking about some question that a bunch of people had posted and devs actually responded to them. You know, Reddit seems to be a really good spot for uh, information on Reddit or not, surprisingly. So I'm going to be sticking with it for a while. Not to say that I'm not looking at any other website because I do have all them up. I'm watching it like a freaking hawk. I'm like a stalker at this point. <coughs> Alright, so we're going to be starting out with uh, melee weapons. Are melee weapons going to be included in Ready or Not? Examples. Batons, knife sticks for SWAT. Bats, knives, machetes for suspects. Fists and punching mechanics for both sides. And the developer responded with, SWAT won't be able to use batons or knife sticks. Aww. Thank you. Will suspects have melee weapons though? Is there a punching mechanic similar to SWAT 4? The Sketch Shop Syndicate? And the developer responded with, We're not planning on punching. And currently, suspects haven't gotten any weapons, but that may change. Alright, so the next we're going to be looking at is the post that was posted by the developers themselves called Fits in there nicely. Not available for the public yet at void underscore interactive. And it basically shows a picture of one that I have yet to actually show you guys, so here it is. And basically what it is is just um, where the game's gonna be when it's actually in Steam, you know, in your, in your game library. Moving on to the next one, which is called, uh, question regarding field of view, viewport, view model. Oh jeez, that's a long one too. Sadly, I am one of many players that suffer from motion sickness when playing at low FOVs, meaning I couldn't play what's shaping up to be a masterpiece if it was locked at a low FOV. The field of view and the available footage would definitely result in motion sickness for me. I am really concerned about this, which is why I quickly created an account to ask you these questions. What's your stance towards variable FOV? Can we expect to get an option to change it? Have you thought about giving us the ability to change the weapon model viewpoint FOV? The second question is more of a cosmetic thing. It would be a shame if those gorgeous weapons animations of yours hid behind the screen. It would also help to keep the screen less cluttered. Many games make you eat half of your firearm when you're aiming down sights. The reason view models have gotten so big is mainly because of the consoles, as you usually sit further away from the screen when playing on them. No hate towards consoles. This guy makes a valid point. For those of you who don't know what view model FOV is or does, and then he posts a link Left is low view model, FOV is r right, is higher. Thanks in advance, hope my post is not too much of a mess. And the developer replies with, FOV can be adjusted in the options menu. You can't change the weapon view model FOV though, due to how UE4 works. Alright, on to the next question. How many maps will there be on release? Oh, interesting. We know there will be at least seven maps. The marketplace in one of the latest teasers, the offices with the motion capture, and in the trailer we saw the staircase. Ain't no staircase, speaks for itself. Also the part with the UMP seems like the same map, I could be wrong. Museum? Not sure if it's a museum, but we saw it in the trailer with the riot shield. That's actually apartments, uh, just throwing it in there. A school, the obvious scene, and a hotel, dear guest, the part with the breaching. Yeah, I figured that was a different map. And of course, the training area. How many maps can we expect? Are we going to see the same amount of maps for both single player and multiplayer? Will there be some maps related? least in the future. On Swap 4 we had Meat Barn, Courthouse, and a power plant in addition to the single player maps. Also a general question about the maps. Will we have outside warfare, like the food wall or the Fairfax, where you have some areas outside? So the developers did already respond, but it was after uh, another person had already responded to him. So this other person had said, definitely outdoor parts in the trailer, you can see dudes in the small forest. And the same guy that asked the question had said, if you're talking about the main trailer, and he puts the uh, link there. 103, you can see the second guy. There is a third guy. Like he has too much green screen on him. I mean, I don't mind if this part was a green screen. I know green screen doesn't work that way. I meant that officer could be masking to the scene. Companies do it for their trailers all the time. Could also be a reflection of the bug on UE4. This is why I asked about the outdoors. FWIW. Not sure what that stands for, but I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. The entire trailer was done in UE4. No masking or green screens. Smiley face. We have a lot of maps. Won't be divulging until I'm allowed, but rest assured, it'll be a very satisfying amount. We may have one or two dedicated to PvP, but for the most part, they'll be... Derivative? Derivative? Of single-player co-op modes. 
Why do they always use smart words? Thanks for the clarification. Then it's probably a reflection bug. May I ask just one more question? Will there be some outdoor areas similar to food wall? Yeah. Moving on. Flipped view models. I know it's not a so important thing, but I'd like to ask, since I've not found anything related in the subreddit yet, will there be mirrored view models? It would be nice to have this detail for us lefties out there, playing with our left hand on mouse, and the developers didn't respond directly to him, but they responded to a person that responded to him, if that makes any sense. Unfortunately, Unreal Engine 4 still does not support, much requested, animation mirroring. UE3 did, so that wouldn't be easily possible. The developer said, correct. Deferred rendering means it's all the same. There's no layers like older versions of the engine. Moving on to the next one. Calling all SWAT 4 players. Remember the pain of forgetting to report something and you spent like 30 minutes trying to find out what you didn't report? Well, it's back, lol. And then it shows a picture of the uh, report dead suspect, which is a feature that was found in SWAT 4. Well, really the entire SWAT series, except I don't really think that it told you unless you got close enough. And the devs responded to it saying, it's the new old meta. And then the next one that we're pushing onto is dual rendering. To the developers, you Gunter and you Ryans? Royans? You Royans. I was wondering since the game is pushing for realism, if you guys were going to implement dual rendered picture in picture render to text or whatever you want to call it. Scopes in the game. Kind of like in COD Ghost and Red Orchestra. I know a lot of FPSs don't do them due to the high performance cost, but is it possible to keep it as an option for those of us with the hardware that can handle it? As of current, we don't have any magnified optics. There hasn't been much need for them since most of the levels are quite close quarters. We do have some PIP stuff where we need it, however. Optiwan? Yep, Optiwan is a good example of pipe use or PIP, or is it PIP? I don't know. A couple of questions on the possibility for rendering the Optiwan. Does this mean that the players next to you could be able to see what's in the room through your OptiWan display. When using team view cam that can be switched on in the top right of your screen, if it's in the game, like Swap 4, will you be able to see what spectated players seeing through their OptiWan? One, yes. Two, possibly. You can OptiWan someone's OptiWan screen though and get a really strange conga line going. <laughs> what? All right, we're moving on to the next one. If you guys end up making a console port, please do. Will there be the possibility of making keyboard mouse support for console like Fortnite does? This would be super cool. Let the record show that they are making a game for console, it's just not going to be out until a little after the PC release. Just to test them waters, if you know what I'm saying. The developers responded to a comment saying, Don't worry, we won't be downgrading the PC version or putting any resources on the console version until after release, and the timing is right. The person that had said that before was saying, worried about this. Console ports almost always fuck up the PC version. I hope they don't have to downgrade the graphics and the mechanics for PC because of switching to console. Look at Planet Side 2 for example. Switching it over to PS4 took a ton of work and hit PC version like a train wreck. Tons of developers not fully working on the PC version. Half-ass optimization and updates also simply suspending development. What did PC get out of this? Massively downgraded graphics, performance, and mechanics. Almost no new faction specific weapons being released for years. It can completely drained them for cash to port and it showed with the server performance coming to a crawl at many points and the developer responded to that so are the devs active on this sub i hardly see the response i'm super hyped for the game but at the same time i'm just as curious as others and the developer responded we are I read the subreddit every day. Windows 7 or 10? Not sure if this is too early to ask, but will the developers recommend Windows 7 over 10 or vice versa? Either should be fine. It'll come down to personal preference. Nothing we're using requires specifically Windows 10 or Windows 7, and I'd expect similar performance on both. This may change in the future as Epic brings more and more support for DX12. Moving on to the next one. Where did the multiplayer info come from? On the FAQs, it says the multiplayer is 8v8, but on the first dev blog, it says create a squad up to 10 friends for PvP and co-op, meaning 10v10 I assume. Anyone know what it means or which one is correct? And one of the developers responds with, 8 players then 2 on the bench as of right now. So technically you could have a little clan. I believe this may change. You know, I kind of want to know what these positions are. Uh, this Gunter guy and the Ryan is guy because I know that they're responding to a lot of questions But I want to know like what they work as maybe somebody could tell me in the comments I need my fix and then it just shows like a weird freaking picture of dev blog <laughs> Dev blogs when interacted at me <laughs> What the hell the first comment reads I just want to know what the hell anal staircase is and the developer replies with for but for five <laughs> For five bucks, I'll show you <laughs> The comment behind it says, I'll pay 50. <laughs> 
All right, we'll move on to the next one. Are there going to be hit markers in this game? Has this been confirmed or denied? The developer responds with no. Hit markers just don't make sense in this game. I mean, if it's trying to be a little more realistic. Up next, we've got, can you see your own character model if you look down? And the developer replies with, plan is to see feet of your lower torso. What's the point of keeping your max instead of throwing it on the floor? In the context of Ron, in the latest dev blog or this example video with a link, the developers write that there are several reload mechanics, one of which is quickly reloading by throwing your magazine on the floor. The other one is slowly put away and grab a new one. My question is, will there be an incentive to keeping your mags instead of throwing it? Like a no equipment wasted bonus at the end? The beauty of combat is you may toss your mag, then lose it in the clutter after a firefight. So now you've got three mags in your rotation. It makes sense to deposit a magazine if you don't have any ammunition left in it, but that'll be your choice. The option upon punishing players for leaving their mags on the ground is there, but if something happens like magazines falling through the floor or becoming unreachable, it can cause problems. I see, I can't wait to see this in action. Not all games implement this sort of system and I can't wait to be concerned and realize I threw out all of my magazines. Oh man, that's gonna suck. Moving on to the next one. Praying that this game doesn't turn out to be another takedown red saber. I'm not sure what that means, but we're reading it anyway. Please devs. All I want is another tactical first-person shooter like Raven Shield or SWAT. Your trailers and gameplay footage so far have intrigued me, and I'll be there day one to playtest. Take as much time as you need to give us a finished product with competitive multiplayer features, and I'll be happy. Thank you. Strangely, this one doesn't have a dev response, but it says dev response. Unless I'm missing it. Hmm, wonder what he said. Maybe like he was going to say something, but he deleted it. I don't know. Maybe somebody answered the question. No idea. But let's move on to the next one, huh? Newer versus older officer models. So this is talking about um, the ones that were posted in the beginning of, you know, the 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 website itself, the Red or Not website itself. So it's it's trying to compare the the older models to the newer ones. And the developer responds with, Our new characters are compromised of real, read-scanned items, almost entirely. The old SWAT units were actually a lot poorer in quality and overall less performant by a huge margin. There's a lot of detail in the new SWAT guy. You haven't seen too much of him yet, but you will. Oh, moving on to the next one. Shotguns. In SWAT 4, shotguns have the option of a less lethal beanbag Nova or a Benelli M4 M1014, a regular Benelli Nova that both are either in slugs or buckshot. As for the shotguns in Ron, it's confirmed that the Benelli M4 or is it a M1014 will be in ready or not. What will the pump action shotgun be? A Benelli Nova or M3? One of the Mossberg shotguns like a 590 or 500 or Remington 870? When it comes to the reloading of shotguns in SWAT 4, you hit the reload button R, for example, loads one shell or hold it to load more shells. While other games, when it comes to the shotguns, you hit a reload button, it reloads the shells you fired. Which of these reloading types of a shotgun is it going to be in ready or not? Also, will any of the shotguns be useful in close to medium ranges, hopefully? And the developer replies with, We have the 590, in for breach, grip pistol, beanbag, green with a flashlight. And as a name tag said below, we have the M4. You can load up slugs, but the buck will carry itself pretty far. They're not scatter guns like in other titles, though there are some spread in order to help it stand out among other weapons. Up next we've got pre-raid suggestions. In Rainbow Six Siege, the game everyone here hates, boy do you know it, there is time for defenders to prepare, and assuming that in Ron, the defenders will be criminals, terrorists, they may have a preparation phase. In Swamp 4, both teams would spawn at the same time in separate locations. While this could work, I believe that for house raids, preparation phase could be useful. Another problem with multiplayer is spawn killing and during the preparation phase of rainbow six siege the defending team could get into position to spawn kill in order to counter this i thought that one of the members of the swat team attacking team would be a sniper like a swap for single player the sniper would have eyes on the building and the windows from the opposite rooftop he would have the option to use lethal force on people planning to ambush incoming swat members during and throughout the operation the sniper would maintain this ability i'm sure it would be difficult to implement so just a suggestion tldr a sniper Sniper could watch over the defending team during the prep phase to avoid spawn killing. And the developer responds with, Our PvP game mode doesn't feature a preparation phase in that sense. It's a little faster into the action than that. Siege does what it sets out to do very well, but we're going in a different direction. Up next we've got bullet penetration. Will there be any kind of saw penetration chance for bullets in surfaces such as drywall, or will it leave impact holes? And the developer responds with, There is penetration for certain physical materials, physical materials being like flesh, wood, brick, ceramic, dirt, water, etc. 
and thicknesses regardless of if it's a door, wall, or any other asset. And each bullet can penetrate different surfaces and thicknesses. Hit angle plays a big part in this. If firing directly into a wall or whatever, there's a good chance it will penetrate. If firing at an angle, there's a good chance it will ricochet, but it can still penetrate. In either case, the more parallel the hit angle, the more deviation the bullet could experience. There is an example of the system below. This is taken straight from the game with the debug line traces embedded showing the bullet trajectory. And it just shows a video from, uh, from one of the dev blogs. I'd look at it, but unfortunately my internet is pretty shit right now, so. And then the other developer decides to come in, put his two cents. Bullets will go through most objects like they would in real life. This was touched upon in our second dev block here. Yeah, the second dev block. And then the other developer says, yes. Up next we got... Some people, especially on YouTube, dislike the name Ready or Not. So how would you rename it if you had to? Am I one of those people that dislikes Ready or Not? No, I mean, I actually like the name Ready or Not. I think it's actually pretty cool. It's only when people start to abbreviate shit that I think it's kind of dumb. Like, I thought the, the abbreviation for Ready or Not as Ron, I thought it was kind of dumb. But, you know, it's whatever people do that. Just like how I think that, um, you know, Player Unknown Battlegrounds, just say Battlegrounds. Like, why are you saying PUBG? That just sounds kind of... Okay, maybe I'm just ranting. Because I can't think of one. Lol. So basically, the term ready or not comes from the um, hide and seek aspect. Ready or not, here I come. Yeah, actually, it says right here with this comment. Uh, probably from the phrase, ready or not, here I come. I believe it's about a SWAT entry in this case. So it's a fitting name, really. The original phrase is most often used to play hide and seek for those unaware. When the developer actually agreed with that, he says, pretty much was the original idea behind it. There's technically another meaning, too, regarding the confronting content of the game. But we won't change the name. We love it. Yeah, don't change it. Please don't change it. A question about leaning. Will leaning one way be more adventurous than the other? In most FPS, the world model is a right-handed guy, like most people. Leading from the left side of a doorway will expose far less of your body than leading from the right-hand side. In real life, they often train people to use guns right and left-handed so they can change the grip for certain corners. This is also one advantage of the P90 because it's fully ambidextrous and ejects downwards, so you can access controls with either grip and also won't hit yourself in the face with ejected brass. What might we see in the game? You press a button to leave while aiming, you quickly jolt your body out around the corner, and can span between leaning and not leaning while aiming down sights. And each time that you lean out, your reticle will be in the exact same place as it was the last time you leaned out. So you can quickly jolt your torso in and out of cover without affecting your aim or reticle placement at all. The developer didn't outright reply to this, it was a bunch of other people that replied, and that's basically what I told you right there. But somebody had asked about jumping, and this is what the developer had said. Our jumping system is very similar to Squad. It's in there to help players. And finally, assuming there will be a soundtrack for the game, will it be available for purchase? And the developer replies with, we hope so. Well, this is the end of the video. Um, I think the last thing that I want to say is that I do have a Discord now. Uh, the link is in the description. Um... And, well, yeah, that's pretty much all I gotta say. I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.